over the past few weeks, we've been speaking with everyone in the running for the top job in the Conservative Party. This morning's candidate is Lisa Raitt. She served as Minister of Natural Resources, Labour and Transport in the Harper Cabinet. Most recently, she stepped down as finance critic to launch her Conservative leadership bid. Lisa joins us now in studio. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure, Ben. All right, 14 candidates. It's yeah. a crowded field. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing to stand out from the pack? Well, of the 14 candidates, there's two women. So that's a good start. But I thank you for talking about my background in the Harbour Cabinet. I'm very proud of my work in that time because we had some really good policies. Economically, we knew how to create jobs in this country. And that's what I'd like to focus on. That's what I would talk about. But also bringing that little bit of a, a Miltonian flair to it and some Cape Breton roots. <laughs> and thinking about being compassionate on social issues because that's how I was raised. Let, let's talk taxation for a second mm -hmm. because you've said that you want hardworking Canadians to keep more of what they earn. I do. So what would you change immediately in the Trudeau taxation plan? I would reinstate TFSAs tax-free savings account, allowing people to save for things like if you're having a baby or you want to save for a house. It's a really good vehicle to do that. I would take a look at our RSP limits because I think Canadians need to be savers in order to deal with the stress of knowing that you're going to retire someday. And I would certainly try to help parents when it comes to raising their kids, not only in the formative years, like my kids are 15 and 12, but when they go to university, college, or a trade school, making sure that there's supports in there. Those are the areas that I see really important where the Trudeau government is dropping the ball. Uh, you've said that the Conservatives are in a period of reflection right now, mm -hmm. and the, the, there's a big fulsome debate going on within the party. Um, but if you look at the headlines and you see what's really grabbing people's attention, for example, Kelly Leach was one of the most Googled names mm -hmm. last year in Canada. Identity politics are sucking up a lot of that air. Mm -hmm. Is an opportunity being missed? Are people not paying attention to other really vital conversations going on in this debate? Because it really does seem that that's what we're talking about a lot. It's a great question. Um, we have so many people on stage in these debates. When I call around the country, they say, we're waiting for the field to narrow. I don't know if the field's going to narrow. And I think what that shows is a Conservative Party that everyone wants to get out there and talk about how they would unify, make it better, and uh, allow us to win in the next election. I'm one of those voices. Um, I can only be me. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be the girl from Cape Breton who grew up at the bottom of the hill next to the steel plant. I'm going to talk about policies that are good for Milton families and let Canadians know that they can trust me to make the right decisions. Does the next leader of the Conservative Party need to speak French? Yes. And how well? They have to be able to communicate with one third of Canadians who speak French as their mother tongue. And I think it's important for me to tell you right now that I work on this every single day. French immersion's in my future. And my sister teaches French immersion in Cape Breton. So I know she's at home watching right now saying, we're here to help you as well. Uh, mental health, mental illness yeah. is something that touches very close to home for yeah. you. Can you, uh, uh, is that part of your platform at this point? 100%. Yeah. Uh, Got to look after the people falling through the cracks through no fault of their own. I was very open about having postpartum depression. I was very open about the fact that my husband has early onset Alzheimer's. And that's part of stigma busting. You do work in this field, Ben. You know what it's like. Yeah. You have to talk about it to allow other people to talk about it. But also be aware that sometimes policy has to reflect things that aren't as cut and dry. Um, and I come from a place where I understand and know what people are struggling with. I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck. I know what it's like to walk out with $100,000 in student loans. And I want to help other people find a better path to prosperity. And I've been there and I know it and I, I know I can do it. Lastly, let's look to Canada's most vital relationship, yeah. that with the United States. If elected, if the Conservatives are elected, then you could be the Prime Minister yeah. working with a President Trump. What's, yeah. the, what's the most important thing that you need to do to get off on a good foot with the Trump administration? Start now yeah. and recognize the fact that the President-elect is going to be wanting to make deals with Canada. And we should be there to make deals, making sure that you're looking after what Canadians value and need. Um, I was given a statistic that of the 34 states that elected Donald Trump, 30 of them, Canada is the number one trading partner. Talk to the states. Talk to the state senator levels. Um, make sure that you have the open communication. They are, as you know, free trade with, yeah. <laughs> with the United States changed our world in Canada. And we have to make sure we preserve and we protect and that we want to promote Canada around the world. And I would work with the administration. Lisa Wright, thank you so much for being here this morning. Have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas yeah, Merry and a happy Christmas. New Year. Thank you. And uh, we should remind everyone that the new conservative leader will be announced in May 2017.